storm is on track to reach Florida late today as a Category 4 hurricane. Forecasts show it moving up the coast and reaching South Carolina tomorrow. About 2 million people in Florida and South Carolina have been urged to evacuate as the state's brace for Matthew. At least 39 deaths in the Caribbean are blamed on this storm. The powerful Category 3 hurricane is hammering the Bahamas right now with sustained winds of up to 125 miles an hour. It's delivering about a foot of rain and massive storm surge. In Haiti, the devastating storm has leveled homes, flooded streets, and killed dozens of people. Chief Weathercaster Lonnie Quinn of our New York station, WCBS, is watching the storm's path. Lonnie, good morning. Well, good morning to you, Nora, and good morning, everybody. Well, we talked about how the storm strengthened. You heard Charlie say it overnight. Yep, let's get right to the information from the National Hurricane Center. Now the winds are blowing at 125. 11 o'clock last night, they were 115. Moving to the northwest at 12 miles per hour, it's right now 30 miles or less to the south southwest of Nassau in the Bahamas. Today it's the Bahamas, tonight and all the way through maybe 2 o'clock Saturday morning. It's all about the Florida coast, then the Georgia coast, then the South Carolina coast. Zoom in tight a little tighter because look at this. Anywhere from West Palm Beach up to about Jacksonville, a little wobble and you would have a landfall. So where do you go uh, with this system? The, the wind field for the hurricane force winds is about 40 miles from the center. So you've got to get at least 40 miles. Let's say the, the, it's in Melbourne. You've got to get to Orlando or points west to be out of the hurricane force winds. Then it does that big turn and eventually pushes out to sea after it flirts with the South Carolina coast and maybe even portions of the North Carolina coast. Hurricane warnings are in effect for all of the Atlantic coastline in Florida. And if you go north of that, it's a hurricane watch by the time you get up into portions of Georgia. So, guys, we've got our eye on this. Let's go back to you, Charlie. Monty Quinn, thanks. You can get round-the-clock coverage of Hurricane Matthew on our streaming news service, CBSN. They'll be up through the storm. You can get CBS in on your mobile devices through the CBS News app. We're also on Apple TV, Roku, and even on PlayStation. Donald Trump says Mike Pence won Tuesday's vice presidential de debate. He took credit for his running mate's performance, hailing his own judgment in choosing Pence. But some of Pence's responses to past comments made by Trump do not hold up. Uh, Donald Trump and I would never support legislation that punished women who made the heartbreaking choice to end a pregnancy. And what? Punishment for abortion, yes or no, is a principle. Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. And Donald Trump has said it, deportation force. They want to go house to house, school to school, business to business, and kick out 16 million people. And I cannot it's believe... It's nonsense. I cannot... You're going to have a deportation force, and you're going to do it humanely. More don't nations put, should get nuclear weapons. Don't put try to defend that. Mouth. Well, he never said that. So you, you have no problem with Japan, Times. South Korea, David having nuclear for, weapons? Uh, at some point, we have to say, you know what? We're better off if Japan protects itself against this maniac in North Korea. We're better off, frankly, if South Korea is going to start to protect itself. Saudi Arabia we nuclear weapons? Saudi Arabia, absolutely. Governor Pence is with us from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Good morning, Governor. <laughs> Good morning, all. Uh, some have said, as they looked at your performance, they have praised your performance in the debate. They've also said that the strategy was to deflect, to deflect rather than defend your running mate. Well, well, first, before I respond to that, let me, let me thank you for all the attention that this program and the network uh, is paying to the, uh, the approaching hurricane. I, our hearts go out uh, to those families who uh, lost loved ones in Haiti, and our hearts and our prayers uh, go out to our neighbors in Florida. And we, we certainly encourage people to support the Red Cross and other efforts that are very likely going to have to step forward uh, in the hours and, and the days ahead. But I, I, I will tell you, Charlie, I, I was uh, very humbled, very honored to be on that stage uh, to uh, tell the story about Donald Trump's vision to make America great again. And, and uh, uh, it was my great privilege to go out. And to be honest with you, I know uh, some people have said that I won the debate. I'll, I'll leave that to others. But I, I honestly believe that Donald Trump won the debate. It was Donald Trump's vision to make well, America great again. It was the Donald Trump's, uh, Donald Trump's aspirations for this country, the policies he's been articulating that I carried forward Well, he said it was debate. his, he said and, it was uh, his good I also Governor sought Pence. to draw a contrast in this, in this debate, and, and uh, I, as I said, it was a privilege for me to be there. Well, Governor Pence, he's claiming credit. He says it was his good judgment in choosing you. As his to, first hire. Yeah, as his first hire. <laughs> you think that's an example of good judgment? Well, and are you giving him any pointers? People say you could give him pointers this Sunday night. 
Well, I, look, I, I, I honestly, obviously, I, I'm, I'm very humbled by his esteem and by the kind words of others. But I, I think the reason why Donald Trump has built an, an extraordinary business, an extraordinary career, is because he, he has had the judgment to make it through tough times. You saw those tax releases that came out from 20 years ago. He, he faced enormous losses in his business. He led an incredible comeback. He did that by drawing around him women and men of extraordinary ability and, and, and enterprise. And, and I think it's exactly the kind of judgment and exactly the kind of, of people that he's going to bring around him if we have the privilege of serving in the next administration. Governor, you said that in the debate you were speaking about Donald Trump's vision. However, you guys differ on a number of policy issues. So let me ask you specifically about those issues, specifically on the topic of immigration. Mr. Trump said that he has supported a deportation task force. Do you also support that? Well, I, I, that, that came up in the debate. It was quite striking to me that this, all this talk about a deportation force, we, we, we have a deportation force in this country. It's called Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And for the first time in the history of uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, their union endorsed Donald Trump uh, to be the next president of the United States of America because they know he has a, a, he has a plan to end illegal immigration, beginning with border security, strengthening internal enforcement through immigration and customs, identifying and removing from this country criminal aliens that are bringing violence and crime to our streets, uh, removing people from this country that the law requires leave after they overstay their visa, and then and then saying once we've done all so, of that, let's let's then reform. It. Our immigration system, and I'll tell you, there's there's no daylight between Donald Trump and I on that, or or any me, other issue. I truly do believe the American people long for us to end illegal immigration. We've talked about it for decades. Let's mm -hmm. do it, and let's do it in the order that Donald Trump described. Governor, let me ask you about Aleppo. Aid groups say their situation there is dire. There are a hundred thousand mm -hmm. children trapped inside Aleppo without food, water, or aid. Would you support using U.S. warplanes to enforce a zone, a no-fly zone, so that aid trucks could get in? Well, Donald Trump and I have consistently called for the establishment of safe zones under, under, uh, you know, under the umbrella of, uh, of, of international approval, and, and we have to act. I mean, the fact that you had the Assad regime uh, with the Russians in, in, the, in the wake of the, the failure of the Russian reset by Hillary Clinton, they're literally on the edge of Aleppo. And, and, and you point straight to those families, straight to 100,000 children. We have to act. We have to act now to establish and protect those safe zones. And so when I was talking the other night in the debate, I said, look, you, we absolutely should be prepared to use military force to establish and preserve the safe zones so, and the ability for people to safely evacuate out of those areas. We so cannot Governor, stand idly by uh, while this humanitarian crisis unfolds before so the Governor, eyes of the world. Your running mate, the man at the top of the ticket, has said this quote, I would have stayed out of Syria. You guys have a different position on this issue. Well, I, I, think, I think Donald Trump's been, been very, very clear about his, his view of, uh, of the Syrian situation that that, w that what we have is an administration that, that first said we were going to have a reset with Russia. That's been a total failure under Hillary Clinton's leadership as Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. President Obama said he would draw a red line that if, if Syria ever used chemical weapons against its citizens, that there would be consequences. The Assad regime did, and there so, were none. So just I mean, to be it's absolutely clear, into a Governor Pence, you, just to and, be absolutely and clear, because I do, I do think there's an issue is, about U.S. military ISIS force. I just want to be in Raqqa. Forgive me. I, forgive me. I just want to be absolutely clear. You and Donald Trump agree that you would use U.S. military force. You have said to bomb Assad forces and to enforce a no-fly zone. There is absolute agreement between the two of you. Well, what, where there's absolute agreement is we have to establish safe zones for people okay. to be able to get out of harm's way in Aleppo. And, and if you don't back that up uh, with military resources and, and our allies in the region, 
then you can't really guarantee that people in those 100,000 children are going to be able to get out of harm's way. Look, Governor. Syria has imploded into a civil war. ISIS is headquartered in Syria. It's all emblematic of the weak and feckless leadership of this administration. Governor, let me just interrupt for one question to make Hillary one Clinton, distinction. And that's why we need change. Governor, let me that's make one distinction so we understand you exactly. Um,